This looks like a minor change and it looks like some new shapes, some new aluminium stamps or something, but this might be one of Tesla's most important updates in the last couple of years, actually. There's been a lot to talk about lately about uh, Tesla's new battery architecture, specifically the switch to an aluminium enclosure underneath the cars, or I should say vehicles, I suppose, and a simplified structural design. And this is, there is one thing to take away from this video, you'll know at the end, probably halfway through. And it is a very interesting question about the fact that it makes it harder to swap the batteries, you know? And if you crash the car or something like that, this isn't really gonna help you. And I know on the surface, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but I think it actually is. It makes it very expensive to repair them, probably cost prohibitive. I know this sort of topic is not on the surface, not that flashy. It's not as flashy as a new model or a, a quick nought to 60 time or a thousand kilometer range, something like that. But if you if you are into what's actually going on, what it actually means, it tell this can tell us a lot actually about where Tesla is going and how, might, how far they might be ahead when it comes to scaling EV production. Obviously, they are very good at that sort of thing and they're very good at becoming very efficient with how they make things and they don't make things necessarily to be repaired. They just make things very well to sell quickly and very, very, very efficiently. So, so think of the advancements in gigacasting Mad, absolutely brilliant. They still talk about it to this day. I think the la in the last speech Elon made on stage, he was talking about it again. So what exactly is this new tech? So according to internal leaks and supplier updates, Tesla's updated battery packs are now using a stamped aluminium housing that eliminates dozens of previous welds and brackets and other parts. Think of it as kind of replacing a whole set of things with one single solid block of aluminium. So the result is a battery enclosure that is 20 to 25%, potentially even a bit more, lighter. It's cheaper to produce, more thermally stable and more structurally rigid. And because it's aluminium, obviously, it can extract heat out of the batteries and really keep them a little bit cooler to some degree. I have no data on that, but that's obviously gonna be a, a net gain. So let's put this into context because you obviously need context to make sense of this. Elon has always said uh, that it's not just a car company, it's a manufacturing company. So Elon Musk has been kind of banging that drum for, for quite a few years. And in fact, in Tesla's earnings call, you'll hear him actually talk about uh, this and more about gigacastings at Tesla and automation and logistics than he does about uh, design or luxury features, that sort of stuff. It is very much a, you know, a manufacturing company to him, I think. So this aluminium battery architecture fits right into that story, actually. So fewer parts means that it's cheaper to make, lighter, it's faster, uh, with sorry, with faster production, and you get effectively a net longer range car for your money and yeah stronger structure underneath uh underneath the car as well so it should be better for side impacts and crashes and uh, frontal impacts and things like that so for example you don't have to upgrade the battery chemistry as well uh, to make an ev better sometimes i don't think i think sometimes i think upgrading things like shorter wiring less connections uh, things like this what tesla are doing you know i think upgrading things like this makes a very big difference how much is actually saved then? So in a traditional EV battery pack uh, manufacturing, wh when they produce an NMC or an LFP chemistry battery, the casing itself maybe takes up something like eight or 10% or maybe even 11% of the battery total mass. That's before you even get to putting cooling systems on or anything like that underneath the body by switching to an aluminium uh, stamped enclosure and integrating it into the vehicle's floor uh, Tesla is likely uh, going to shave off something like 20 to 40 kilograms per pack just simply because they changed the metal depending on uh, the configuration as well. So de that depends on the car and that sort of thing. Uh, that might not sound like a lot, but here's the thing. If that gives you 10 or 15 kilometers of extra range for a full charge because of the weight saving, you know, that, and you can squeeze in an extra battery cell, something like that, that's a very big deal across 2 million cars per year. That's an entire weight, the weight of an entire city, basically, uh, you know, worth of batteries being saved for free. So that is a very big deal. So there are three main things here to consider. One, aluminium stamping, just like Tesla, uh, Tesla's use of the Gigapress for the Model Y. They're now doing it for the battery pack as well. And that was only a matter of time, really. Number two, structural battery design. The pack is no longer just a box of batteries, effectively. It becomes part of the actual car's chassis, even more than it did 
in cell to body designs and things like that. Number three, thermal improvements. Aluminium conducts heat incredibly, inc incredibly well. Uh, better as well than steel, by the way, by a, a long way. Meaning less energy is wasted managing battery temperatures and uh, just, yeah, just keeping things with a very, you know, st stable equilibrium. And as close as you can get really to that. This is the same thinking that made Tesla's unboxed manufacturing strategy possible in the first place, simplifying the process at literally every single step from the ground up, trying to assess uh, what is the weakest link and having a very, very, very good feedback loop within the, the team of engineers, I think. And this is how they will scale to 10 million vehicles a year, I reckon, in the next five or 10 years. So this is where it gets interesting. BYD's blade battery Gen 1 and Gen 2, or Gen 0, 1 and 2, I should say, because, you know, there's a bit of a story about that. They use LFP chemistries in long, flat cells, which they slot directly into the vehicle's floor, which I think is kind of genius. It's a very, I think it's a very effective way of doing it. It's a brilliant design. There is no modular casing, no wasted space or anything like that. Incredibly efficient. But Tesla's new design now borrows some of those principles. So even though they do still use cylindrical cells, the 4680s, they are bedding those cells into a load-bearing aluminium tray, which is different. That is a very big deal. So it's Tesla's version of a blade battery. It's kind of like Tesla's version of a blade-like integration, if you will. So just, just using a different shape and material. So BYD might still have the edge on cost per kilowatt hour, but Tesla is catching up. Manufacturing elegance, I think. I've just coined that term, especially in markets as well, uh, where labour costs are quite high. This will make a very, very big difference. Neo, on the other hand, is obviously, you know, they're probably not that big a fan of this, are they? They're all about uh, battery swap technology, which actually discourages uh, people from doing what Tesla is doing. A swappable battery needs to be very, very modular removable in some way and very very quickly and effectively and uh, not part of the car structure basically in, in in almost no way really it just bolts underneath temporarily i guess you could work around that but it's it makes life harder for companies like neo and that is a big trade-off and it means that neo has more flexibility and uh, you know much less integration less stiffness more weight and while it is great for customers in the short term anyway. It might slow them down when it comes to manufacturing efficiency. And that's obviously, you know, that's kind of where Tesla is, um, you know, that's their number one goal, I think. So Tesla is betting on the opposite, you know, full integration, even if that means the battery can't be swapped or it's, you know, is, is better for scaling. It's fast and cheap. What legacy automakers are still missing, I would say, is uh, legacy automakers like Ford or Volkswagen or Toyota, I would say they are still playing catch up when it comes to battery pack architecture in many cases anyway so their evs are still using modular based packs retaining steel casings and and things like that it's not very efficient quite heavy which is uh yeah it's just not the best design really mounting the packs on the chassis not within it that would add cost and weight and complexity and it's probably unnecessary especially in 2025 to 2030 at this point and uh yeah in tesla's view it would be for sure. And it's not overly efficient to do it like that. So even Hyundai, which is doing great things with the eGMP platform, I'll make a separate video on this, hasn't just, uh, hasn't yet moved to fully structural battery packs yet. So when Tesla brings this into the mainstream models anyway, not just the Cybertrucker or, uh, or the Model 3 or the Model Y, it will basically set a new industry benchmark for structural EV design and I would probably say efficiency as well. And that brings a whole set of questions, basically. What does this mean for you, the buyer, if you're looking to buy a Tesla in 2025, 2026, 2027? The aluminium battery pack could mean a negligibly longer range, possibly a bit faster to charge due to better, better thermal management. So they can chuck in an extra 50 kilowatts or something like that when the battery is getting hotter, a stiffer ride maybe, better handling, a little bit more nimble, and over time, lower costs, but probably not something that you would notice if, if we're honest. And then when they when they charge you three thousand dollars extra to change the color to you know from white to red i don't think they're going to give you i don't think they're going to you know shave off fifty dollars and then pass that cost saving on to you because of this little advancement i think they will most likely pocket it so it's the kind of innovation that doesn't make a flashy headline 
probably not many people are going to talk about it. It does change the game, so to speak. And uh, yeah, this is how Tesla's keep its margins fairly high, uh, but prices drop. So what about safety? Structural battery packs aren't just efficient. They're actually uh, quite safe enough. Safe enough, anyways. And uh, yeah, you just get a battery pack and you bolt it to the bottom. But this still makes it theoretically safer. And obviously, safety tests will show how much more safe. I haven't seen the footage, but... Uh, by embedding the battery directly into the chassis, Tesla can effectively improve side impact protection by a number of percent, actually. Most notably, I think, uh, it distributes the crash forces more evenly throughout the side of the A, B, and C pillar, basically, in the car. It's a win, and it does mean that repairs could become more expensive, though. So that's a bit of an issue, isn't it? So this would mean it's actually tricky to fix them. So the whole frame might need to actually be adjusted or, or I, don't, I don't think they'd probably do any bending because it's forged aluminium probably, so it potentially would just crack. But uh, yeah, it, it, it would be very expensive and they would have to replace large parts of the car in extreme cases. Obviously, these cars are not valuable enough to really do that stuff. So a lot of cars will end up being written off, I think. So obviously it's not really going to happen that they fix a lot of these cars. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? There are some pros and cons here. It will cost more than the car is worth sooner uh, because of these repairs to, 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 you know, to fix them. So cars will just get written off. I think it's a brilliant thing for Tesla. I think it's uh, brilliant for manufacturing and probably for safety. It could kind of be trickier though for post-crash repairs, you know. So it's already quite expensive as it is. It's worth keeping in mind because... Uh, that sort of thing will drive up insurance prices. This is definitely something to consider. It is something that directly concerns us as consumers. So how much aluminium is actually used? This is an interesting question, and we don't exactly know, but an average Tesla battery pack uses somewhere around 400 kilograms of cells, and then uh, the casing for the car can be about 100 kilograms on top of that, depending on the configuration. So Tesla, if Tesla do switch from steel to aluminium, obviously they will save maybe 20 to 40 kilos per vehicle, maybe something like that. It needs to be stamped and uh, forged, I think you need to, I think you'd say. Up to 60% fewer joints and welds and a lot less parts as well, and as much as $300 per unit in material and labour saved as well over 2 million cars per year that effectively means it's probably 600 million dollars saved just from changing how they box their batteries so that's a very big deal and it's a real gain for them honestly that's just napkin math by the way don't quote me on that so tesla's new aluminium battery architecture it's not flashy you won't see it on billboards you won't see it on uh, many youtube videos probably it doesn't really have wings on it or anything like that it won't drive itself but it is the clearest signal yet that Tesla is still going uh, full steam ahead on next-gen manufacturing, still you know making these refinements and really trying to uh, take things to the next level, not just for the Cybertruck either, but for basically the mass market from everything they build here on out. Because in the EV world, the companies that when aren't necessarily the ones with the best ads they're the ones who can make millions of cars faster and cheaper and make more profit per vehicle usually byd is obviously a very good example of that what do you think would you trade a swappable battery for better structure or safety and uh, performance and maybe a little bit of extra range you know do you care more about repairability rigidity how important is this for you uh, because I think for me it would be a very big deal, I think. But I would probably take the, the range as the appeal, isn't it? So let me know in the comments and I'll be reading all the comments. Thank you very much to the YouTube members, these people on screen who are the YouTube members and patron uh, pa patron members on Patreon. Thank you for watching. Whether you're a subscriber or not a subscriber, that's okay. I don't really mind. I hope you got something from the video. hope you thought it was interesting. If you want to support the channel, you are very welcome to. Even just subscribing, that's free. And it, um, yeah, it's, it's good for the videos. So thank you very much.